Hey guys, and welcome back to the Loader Max Gallery tutorial. Um, where we left off last time was we got our thumbnails to load in across the stage. So what we're going to do now is fix up the stretching issue on them and get them to load in a two column fashion. So we'll have four down and two across. So I'm going to head back to my coding and I'm going to get rid of that X statement that we put in there before. That was just for testing and it worked. So what we're going to do now is use a little bit of math to figure out where um, we're going to set up our columns. So I'm going to use, actually what I'm going to do first is set up a couple of variables because we're going to be using width and height a couple times so I'd rather have one place just to store them. So let's set up our variables for uh, image loader vars. I want to set up a number variable for our image width going to be 150 and another variable for our image height also going to be 150 and a variable for how many columns we want so max columns and we'll set that to 2 for the time being so down in our x property here what I want to do is say I modulus of our max columns so I multiply that by our image width and for our y I want to get an integer of our um, whatever i is up to divided by our max columns and then multiply that by the image height so let's give that a shot and there we go and I think I botched the image height yep I did image height should be 100 not 150 that's more like it so let's fix up the stretching now which is a bit of a problem um, because what we can do is we can set up a scale mode what we're going to do is use a proportional inside So what this does is it basically sets our image to be um, inside the bounds of our width and height. And I should actually change that width to our variables. So in case we change something later down the track, they will automatically update. Not width, image height. That's better. So I'll just show you with proportional inside. So they fit the 150 by 100 area but obviously it doesn't look too nice because we've got a lot of black and all empty space around these. So what I'm going to do instead is say proportional outside. But the problem with this is the images end up being a little bit larger than our frame and they end up overlapping a couple of the other thumbnails. So another feature we can use which is part of the image loader is the crop. And this is going to crop the image to be exactly uh, width and height. So that's working a lot better now. I know some parts are getting like sort of cut off, but you know it gives the user incentive to click on it to see what the larger image is fully about. So that looks pretty good for our thumbnails. So let's go ahead now and set up the click events for the thumbnails. So when our thumbs are loaded, um, that's the event list that we set up for it, and yep, it's getting down here. So what we want to do is set up click events for our thumbnails. So once again, I'm going to loop through my image list, so I'm just going to set up a quick loop. And uh, actually I can't because we've defined our image list up here in the XML loaded function and because we're setting it up as a var here it's only available in this function. So what I'm going to do is in flash develop I'm going to do a control shift 1 and promote it to a class member. What that does is basically it takes out the var and it sets up a private variable up here at the start of our um, 
document class and basically when you set something up here it's accessible in all the functions that you create so if I were to type XML or X image list it shows up here in my code hinting now and let's get rid of that so when our thumbnail gets loaded we want to store a reference to that so I'm gonna just set up a quick um, content display reference so what we can do here is get the content that we just loaded so load a max dot get content and if you remember the name so we can either supply a name or a URL string so what I'm going to use is the name because they just increment up by one it's a little bit easier to work with so I'm going to say get content which is uh, p plus whatever i is equal to plus one because remember i is starting off at zero here but our images start off at one so that's why I'm doing i plus one and we'll just set our content display image we'll set its button mode to true So basically when we do give it a test and roll our mouse over it, we get that little finger pointer coming up. Okay, so let's set up the click event for it now. So content display image, add event listener, and I'm gonna go for a click. And I'm gonna make it go to a function called thumb click. And that will do for now. So let's set up that function. So what we want to happen here in this uh, thumb click function is we want to get a reference of what image that we want to load. But at the moment we don't actually have um, any way of pinpointing which button we've clicked on. So even though we're getting a reference of it here, there's no actual number that we can um, grab in here in our thumb click function. So what the greensock guy is nicely done is included this new feature called prop and we can add this to our image loader vars and we can store any um, arbitrary data that we want along to be included when we click on an image or just have it there basically that we can access at any point in time so I'm going to set up a couple of properties here I'm going to set up an index property and this is just going to be equal to i so we can grab uh, which number button we've clicked on Gonna set up another property for our URL. So what image we want to load in, and that'll be part of the X image list. I and our attributes URL. And I may as well put the title in the description here as well. So the title of our image. description okay so now that we've included these properties in our image load of ours we can now access them in our thumb click function by referencing uh, the vars object so what I'm going to do is set up a vars object in here and this is just going to be a generic type of object. And what we're going to be listening or referencing is our e.currentTarget and the loader that's part of that target. So in this case, it'll be image loader. So we should cast it as an image loader. And the object that we want is just called vars. So now, just say if I do a quick little trace of our vars.title I'm just going to save that and test so when I click on an image here we're getting squirrel one we're getting a car for that getting a smile for this one so the variables are sending across into this thumb click function so now that we're getting that we can actually um, load in our larger image because we have the URL of what we want 
but before we do that we should actually check to see um, if there was a previous image loaded in there at the start there won't be any any images loaded in there but as we start clicking on our um, thumbnails it's going to keep adding images to that holder and we don't want we want them to keep stacking up it'll just yeah make our app run really slow and it's not really good coding so what I'm going to do is go to a function that we're going to make called um, it's called check old image and we're going to pass it into that image uh, vars.index so I'm going to create a private function for that and uh, argument one here is going to be called index and that's going to be a number so here we're going to check if there's already an image and if there is already an image we'll get rid of it if there isn't we'll just load in the new um, image that the user clicked on so what I'm going to do here is check if our image holder and I haven't set that up yet we've called our second movie clip holder main holder so I'm gonna add that up here as a public variable and now we should be able to use it down here so our main holder dot number of children if it's greater than zero so there is an image already loaded on there what we're going to do is get a reference to the old clip so I'll just call this old clip for example and this will be a sprite more than likely actually let's go with movie clip just to be on the safe side and this will be our image our main holder get the child at zero so we'll get the first object that's on our stage inside that um, clip and what we want to do with it is set up a tween max to fade it out so sometimes if you type the uh, name of the function or the name of the class that you want to use in flash develop it doesn't show up with the dot syntax so what you can do is just press control shift one again and Flash develop will then automatically import the class for you. And you know when it goes blue that everything's done right. So we're gonna set up a two tween on this for our old clip. And say in half a second we'll fade it out to nothing. So we'll set the auto alpha to zero. And when we complete the twin, uh, I think I might just do an inline function here because I don't want to get too many functions chaining onto one another. So, this is probably not the best coding practice in the world, but we're only putting two little things in here. So, an inline function, and we're going to be removing the child once it's finished fading out. So, in our main holder, remove child at zero and then finally we want to load in our new image so we'll go to another function called load image and we'll pass it our index but if there's no image already loaded what we should do is just go ahead and load our image and give it the index. So this will happen the first time around and this will, this will happen every other time that an image has already been loaded. So let's set up this function now. And I might yeah do another break here and we'll come back in a part three and show you how to load in that with just using uh, image loader. So thanks for watching.